Now, we are almost there. This is almost finished. The other things that I would like to do over here will be to rotate all these labels. Um, what We could select each one of these uh, objects, one, two, holding the shift key on the keyboard just to select all these numbers. I'm going to move them a little bit to the left. And then what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to make sure that they are not grouped. Okay, so I'm going to go to the object menu, and as you can see, the ungroup option is a disabled. That's great. That's exactly what I want. And then right after that, I'm going to go to the a object menu again, transform, transform each, or transform individually. And right now, I will use this tool before, therefore, this is still inheriting <coughs> the changes that we made before. We don't want to change the scale of these things. So I'm going to bring the scale 100 and 100, so the size will remain the same. What I'm going to do is to rotate them. I'm going to rotate these labels 90 degrees, all right? And then I'm going to just click elsewhere. As you can see, this is not exactly what I want, right? So it, it, it rotates them 90 degrees. Perhaps what I want to do is minus 90. So we will rotate them in the right direction. Okay, so play with these values until you get what you want. And then you click on OK. The other thing that I want to do is to align them to the right, because all of them should be aligned over here. So if we have all these text boxes selected, we can click on Command, Shift, R, and that will align everything to the right. But as you can see, the zero is not really aligned with all the other with all the other labels. We want all those labels to be at this on the same level, okay? On the uh, align on the vertical axis. So we could go to the window menu, align, okay? The align palette over here, and we can align everything to the right. There you go. Now they are perfectly aligned on the y uh, on the y axis. Now, obviously, and this is important to remember, you should not stick to the style that this thing has. So, what you you will need to decide what what font sizes are for your own graphic. You will need to keep things consistent. Perhaps twelve points is a little bit too big. For example, if this is going to be a print graphic, eight or nine points will be more than enough. But this is something that you can decide later. Once that you size, once you, once you put this graphic inside your composition and change its size, then you can decide on, on on font sizes and tweak them manually. Now, all the other, most of the other changes are things that you already know how to do. So this is just a basic headline with a different a different font. This uh, text box, the introduction is also another text box. This is another text box. So you already know how to do all that. The last thing that I would like to explain today is how to create arrowheads. Okay, so as you can see, we have an arrowhead over here, like a little curved line and an arrowhead. Now, in the past, in, in earlier versions of Illustrator, we created arrowheads manually. Okay, and, and I'm going to show you a little trick to do arrowheads manually. But then I will show you how to do it uh, using one feature of the program. So let's suppose, for example, that you have this line. Okay, so I'm going to just draw a line over here, and I'm going to change that to a stroke color. And you want to put an arrowhead over here. Here's how to create an arrowhead in Illustrator. Go to the rectangle tool. Okay, so go to this one and just hold the uh, mouse button to go to the rectangle. Create a perfect square. So I'm going to hold the shift key and then drag, and that creates a perfect square. Right now it has a stroke color, but it doesn't have a fill color. I want to change that. So I'm going to switch over here, a stroke for a fill color. So right now it's black. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. So I'm going to go to this uh, rotate tool, click twice on the rotate tool, and rotate this 45 degrees. And that creates like a diamond, right? Now, immediately after, I'm going to go to the white selection tool, click off to select uh, to deselect everything. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm going to select the anchor point. All right, so this arrowhead is going to be pointing down. Therefore, I'm going to select the upper anchor point. And I'm going to use the arrow key on the keyboard, the down arrow key on the keyboard, to move this anchor point down. There you go. We have an arrowhead, right? Now, if we want to make this arrowhead a little bit um, uh, not that narrow or not that short, we could also select this other anchor point here at the bottom and push it down using the arrow key, the down arrow key on the keyboard. Okay, and once we do that, we have the beautiful arrowhead that we can put over here. Perhaps it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to go to the scale tool, I'm going to click twice and scale it 30% or something like that, and then I'm going to move it up. So you can basically just manipulate it the way you want. So this is how you do arrowheads manually. Now the thing is that you can also do arrowheads using a feature in Illustrator. I'm going to select this line and duplicate it, oh, sorry, duplicate it over here. I'm going to move it, hold the shift key, hold the option key, 
and then I'm going to let go the mouse button and let go the shift key and the option key. Now, if you go to the stroke a palette, so it's under window stroke, that will be trazo in Spanish, window stroke. There is an option in the stroke palette. If you don't see it, go to the, if you don't see all these options, go to the upper menu over here on the stroke palette show options okay if, if it shows like these just go over here show options okay this menu show options as you can see it says arrowheads you can add arrowheads to the beginning of the line or to the end of the line okay and arrowheads means uh, endings uh, it's not just arrowheads but also different kinds of endings so we could add for example this one to the beginning and this way uh, another one to the ending i would i don't recommend to do this unless you want to do an actual arrow uh, which is maybe what what you want to do right but what we need over here is not anything on the beginning, so I'm going to click over here and click on none, and at the end we will have this little arrowhead. Now, this is not a manually created arrowhead, okay? Therefore, you cannot select it individually, right? This is still the line. If you click on Command Y, you will see what I mean. The arrowhead doesn't show here, because it's not an actual object, it's just an effect. This other one shows, because this is a separate object. We have the line, and the arrowhead as separate objects. Here they are a single object, it's just a line. That means that if I select, for example, the bottom anchor point of the line and I move it elsewhere, the arrowhead will change, will change position, as you can see, okay? So this is the whole principle behind this little arrowhead that I have over here. The thing is that in this case, I didn't draw the curve manually, all right? I, as you can see, that, that is almost a perfect semicircle, all right? So what I did was a, to create a, an actual circle, so I'm going to go over here, a, ellipse tool, okay? I'm going to create a perfect circle. I'm going to hold the shift key and draw a circle. And then what I'm going to, e what I'm going to do is to erase all portions of the circle other than, the la other than this one, okay? So I'm going to click on this anchor point and delete, okay? That will delete half of the circle. Then I'm going to select this anchor point, all with the white selection tool, okay? This anchor point and delete it. So there you go, now I have my curve, which looks similar to this one. I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go over here and select arrowhead, any arrowhead, at the ending. But as you can see, Illustrator thinks that this is the end of the line. Actually, what I want is that arrowhead over here. Therefore, what I need to do is to just go over here, click on none, and then select here at the beginning, all right, and then just click on the arrowhead that I want, for example, that one. I don't really like that one that much. I'm going to select a different one, perhaps. Let me see, one that I like will be arrow number five. That's the one that I like the most. But you can feel free to use whatever uh, arrow you want. And then just move that, you know, that little um, a, a call out line or whatever you want to call it over here. And then you can go to the scale tool and, and scale it up 200% to make it bigger, all right, and then just place it whatever you want. Perhaps it's a little bit too thick, it's two points. 0 0.5 will be more than enough, right? You can also scale it manually. So you go to the scale tool, all right, and hold the shift key and pull on a 45 degree angle line, and then just move the arrow to whatever you want it place, and just write the text box over here. So I'm going to go here, create a text box, and that will be a, the my explanatory text, okay, that explains what this thing is measured. So I believe that with all the with these tips that I have been explaining so far, you will be able to just continue and just style your graphic uh, this way to make it look much more beautiful, much more beautiful than the original one that we created with Insight, which looks fine enough, but it could use a lot of improvement in terms of design.